Welcome to another episode of Before You Buy, the show on Game Ranks where we give you some first impressions and some raw footage to kind of give you a little bit of intellectual ammo as far as making your purchasing decisions with your games. Today's episode is Star Wars Battlefront, and I'm going to preface this with saying I am a Star Wars Battlefront fan. I've played every version of it, and I enjoyed every version of it. That being said, I intend to bring you an objective look at what's a pretty darn good game that is lacking in just a couple of areas that are very annoying. And they may not be exactly what you think I'm going to say. Either. So let's start off saying this. There's no campaign. You probably already knew there was no campaign, but just in case, there's no campaign. Old school fans such as myself probably will miss it a little bit more than new school fans who are just kind of getting into Battlefront, but still, there's no campaign. There are single player and co-op missions that you can play locally, but they aren't a campaign. Campaigns are great in first person shooters, especially one as well done as this, and I do want to emphasize that this is an incredibly well-made game. Mechanics wise, I can't imagine a better combination of some of the concepts of old school Star Wars Battlefront and a more arcade and modern style of FPS, or indeed third person shooter for that matter. If you think you're going into an RPG like experience, there are unlocks, you do progress as you play, it definitely does go somewhere, but it's also, as I said, a bit arcadey. And for me, that's actually a positive. I like arcade style games. And if you go into this game thinking I really would like a Star Wars match-based multiplayer arcade style game that takes first-person shooting, puts it in the Star Wars universe, and distills it to a very, very focused idea, then, then there's literally no way you won't love this game. But if you do go into this game thinking you want a deeper experience and you would like a story or anything like that, you will be disappointed. When I say arcade style, I mean matches are a fairly short period of time. When you die, you spawn as quickly as you want to. There's no delay. Action isn't beyond simplified into all hell, like it's not a mobile title, but it is definitely simpler than Star Wars Battlefront 2, and also more fast-paced. Now, as I said, I was kind of expecting this, and in my opinion, it's it's absolutely the right style for a Star Wars shooting game in 2015. This is a great game. Like, it plays great, it's so much fun, it's very addictive. I personally keep playing it, and playing it, and playing it. I'm really, really enjoying it. The various modes that they have are actually a ton of fun, including the single player modes specifically survival battles and hero battles other than the training mode really the training mode is don't even bother with the training mode you know how to play the game if you've ever played any other first person game there's some minor adaptions you'll have to do to controls and you can figure them out without even trying the worlds themselves there are only four of them which is very disappointing in my opinion however they're done incredibly well particularly endor endor is an amazingly lush forest that literally looks like the movie i can't even tell you how perfect Endor looks. It's really amazing. The other locations also look like they're straight out of Star Wars, Hoth and Tatooine specifically. And the new planet, Sullust, is absolutely just gorgeous. The type of otherworldliness on display at Sullust almost makes me happy that they didn't show Sullust during the course of Star Wars history, despite having mentioned it in the original movie. It's basically a volcano planet, but the opposite take from Mustafar in that it's kind of a volcano planet with a cooled surface and it's gorgeous. It's it's all this blue and black with these flourishes of completely red lava rivers. And that's all the planets. There's four planets. That's it. In December, there will be one more planet, Jakku, which ties in directly to the new movie. But still, five planets even seems a little low. I really, really hope that as time passes, they add planets. That being said, each planet has a few different maps, which is good because there are a lot of different modes that utilize different aspects of each planet. For instance, Walker Assault utilizes air to ground combat, while Fighter Squadron is entirely focused on air, and modes like Drop Zone and Supremacy kind of take the concept of the original Battlefront games, the command post oriented gameplay, and puts a couple of new spins on it. You have your traditional death matches like Blast, and a few other interesting things that involve heroes, droid run, and cargo. There's nine modes in multiplayer, and four modes in single player, which does deliver a fair variety of experience, but I just can't help but say it's not enough. Yes, Fighter Squadron 
Squadron is completely different than Supremacy. And I will say, Fighter Squadron is actually pretty darn fun. If you go into it thinking, oh, the controls are going to be like Rogue Squadron or something, you're going to be heavily disappointed because the controls are entirely revamped. Nothing like any really previous Star Wars dogfight oriented gameplay. Really nothing at all like it. But still a great deal of fun. Again, if you kind of drop your expectations and realize this is an entirely new developer creating an entirely new game, that doesn't mean set your expectations low. It means don't have expectations because having expectations for quality and having expectations for type are two very different things. And the quality is actually very high for this game. It's just the type is somewhat different in some areas. Now, I will tell you my main disappointment with this game is just kind of the lack of content. Like I said, there's four worlds, a few maps on each world, and that's that. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not going to keep me busy for a long time, because it is definitely going to. I really enjoy how this game plays, how the matches play out. Just everything about it works, and it really makes me feel like I'm in Star Wars, which is the true goal of the game for sure. But I can't help but wonder what it would be like if there were Bespin levels, or space battles, or some prequel era stuff, because frankly, the prequel era stuff was really fun in the original Battlefront games, particularly Kamino. That map was so fun. And the reason why was just because it was so unpredictable. It was a lot of platforms above an ocean and you could fall in at any time. And I just can't help but wonder what that would be like with the technological advances of this Battlefront. I think probably awesome. But even that lack of content could probably be remedied with a good campaign that went through these whole worlds. And it's not even that there isn't a good campaign, it's that there is no campaign. This is a multiplayer match-based arcade shooter. And if you don't look at it like that, you're going to be disappointed. However, I will say this as well, due to the fact that it does not have a campaign and only has four worlds, I do not think that this is worth $60. I think this is a $40 game, and when it gets down to $40, you need to buy it. It's a ton of fun, and I love it. But $60 is a lot of money, and this isn't a lot of game. Yes, it has major replay value because it works really well in every way that it needs to work really well. But that's kind of about all it does. It just gets it really, really right. But just getting it really, really right doesn't mean anything because if the Order 1886 was somehow not a disaster, but still the same length, it'd still be a five hour game that costs $60. Same thing here. It's not a five hour game. I'll play this for more than five hours for certain. However, for the type of game it is, during that time, I would like to play more things than just four worlds worth of different modes, you know? Now that being said, I don't feel jilted that I spent the $60 on it, and I'll tell you the reason. It's because I've waited for so long for a new Battlefront game. These games are probably my favorite games, and knowing that they're at least on the onset of a new series of Battlefront games really makes me want this to do well, and I also want to play it a lot. I want to enjoy having battles in the Star Wars universe, and in all those ways, I'm satisfied. So if you're a hardcore fan and a little bit open-minded, and knowing going in that some stuff has been changed and that if you don't penalize the game for having changed some things in the last decade, you're going to get a great experience. But if you're basically anyone else, and I'm sure there's quite a few people that even do fit into that category that would think the same, you probably want to wait until this game is reduced in price. So while this isn't really a review, I'm not assigning a number score, it's still a great game, it's just not a $60 game, it's a $40 game. And at $40, it's a must-have game. So really, I mean, think about that. It's it's not like this is a bad game. It is a good game. It's just less game than we wanted it to be. Not so much less that it's terrible. It's just the price should be $20 less than it is, period. And I'm sure there's somebody out there that will disagree with that, and I get that. And like I said, even for me, it is worth the $60, if not just to kind of be back in the world of Star Wars. But that's not all people out there. So to sum it up for you, this is a really, really fun game that feels incredibly faithful to Star Wars and goes the extra mile on attention to detail. However, I wonder if a little bit of that detail could have been foregone in favor of more levels. Because I can tell you this right now, I don't spend a lot of time in these really hectic fast-paced multiplayer matches looking at the leaves. It's beautiful, it plays great, and it leaves me wanting more. However, it leaves me wanting more because there's not enough. That specific piece of information makes me both incredibly happy to own this game and also also disappointed as well. It would really be impossible for me to give it a number score. Luckily this isn't a review and I don't have to assign it a number score because that would be impossible. I simultaneously enjoy it and am disappointed by it in such a weird way that that ambivalence really couldn't translate into a score that
that worked to express what I wanted to say about the game anyway. So, like, basically, I really hope that I was able to give you some information that made it easier for you to make your decision, whether or not you do want to buy it. Speaking of that, if you already do own it, we would really love to hear what you have to say about it. Go into the comment section, write us up a nice little essay. By that, I mean a sentence or so. Really, I don't, I don't want to force you into an essay. And click the like button, because it helps us so much as we try to make more and more videos for you, especially going into the holiday season. If you're not subscribed to Game Ranks already, now is the best time to do it, because we upload new videos every single day and the best way to see those first is a subscription. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you next time here on Game Ranks.